Hi, Lisa. Um, I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on the last video demonstration that I sent you with regard to the question of how to do faces. So um, what I want to try to explain is that if you treat things differently, then they'll look awkward or strange. That's to say, if you try to paint um, the appearance of someone's face or the likeness of a portrait inside the larger context of the reproduction, it'll look odd. And that's when it makes it appear as the, though you can't paint faces. So what I am trying to show you um, in the, uh, the, the, the self-portrait demonstration is that if you just find these patterns of light and dark with the monochromatic palette and you just see one value next to another, it'll assemble itself with the appearance of the face. So there's, there's a bit of a paradox involved, meaning if you try not to be self-conscious about drawing or painting a face, it will look like the portrait of the person. But if you try to paint the face, making a overt attempt to label things like nose, eyes, mouth, and that sort of thing. That's when um, we stop working from observation and listing facts that we see that apply themselves in the form of one particular three-quarter value next to a lighter value and so on. So I, as you can probably tell, this is a difficult thing to do remotely or at least explain. Um, so I want to do the best I can to try to explain this as well as show you um, in regards to that demonstration, uh, a way in which to do it. You can slow that down. You can see the changes that were made. Um, you can also see that there wasn't an, an idea of drawing out an idea of a nose or an, uh, an idea of an eye or anything else. It was trying to accumulate, once again, these patterns of light and dark so that they assemble into a form or the structure of a head. Um, anyway, I hope some of this is clear. Let me know if you still have problems and um, I'll see if I can come up with another solution. Okay.